we all know weather patterns are changing and there's much evidence that the climate is changing itself. So what does that mean for sustainable drainage on a site like this? After all, there are many sites like this around the country and traditionally it means a large building area, this one typically 40,000 square feet of roof area here, as well as the hard park standing. What happens when it rains is that all of that water runs off and it has to go somewhere. More importantly, it also has a large number of pollution components within it. So let's take a look at what makes up sustainable drainage on a large urban facility such as this. We have a car park that's laid to a 1 in 60 fall, um, falling away from the building generally across the site and we have a midpoint collection of ECO QMAX slot drains. Within them there are gully outlets that in turn connects to a, a granular discharge bank that's buried under the car park surface which then in turn uh, collects and discharges down into the swale at the bottom of the site. The swale was quite important to the overall sustainability from the planning point of view, was it Chris? We're very keen in Leicester to see these sort of solutions and yes, the swale is quite a traditional or becoming a more traditional type of sustainable drainage feature. I think what's so exciting here is the way in which the water eventually gets to that swale through the two linear collection areas through the blankets that are hidden under the surface of the car park but are actually quite simple in their technology. First of all it's managing the quantity but more importantly here it's treating the actual sort of water that's going through. So these filter blankets under the surface of the car park actually help to clean the water which is further cleaned through the swale. So let's talk about the sustainable drainage elements of this site. The roof area and the car park area are delivering around about 300 litres per second of rainfall that has to be dealt with and we have to deal with that for both the quantity of water as well as the quality. Now the first part of the uh, rainfall management is through this channel drain system, the ACO QMAX system and this sits around about halfway down the car park. So we've got the channel taking the water from the surface and that is conveyed to the special outlets. Now these were designed specifically for this site. First of all, the actual outlet is very, very shallow, which enables connection to ongoing surface suds, and that's quite important. It's also important that we actually take out a lot of the sediments that are present in car park stormwater runoff. And we're doing that in two ways on this project. Firstly, there are these bespoke filter units. Now, as you see, they're manufactured from stainless steel and there is a removable cartridge here and the pore size on this mesh is 500 microns. The second line of defense is actually this bag of polystyrene beads. Now, this might sound quite unlikely, but this has been proven by Sheffield University to offer some quite good performance with respect to pollution removal for sediments, hydrocarbons and metals. The bag will be installed in the special shallow invert gully chambers which we've designed specifically for this site. The second value that this bag brings is actually during the construction phase. As you can imagine, an awful lot of pollution runs off a site like this during construction a lot of concrete, a lot of dust, a lot of other particulates and these bags are great inside the drainage system which is often the first part of the installation in place and this helps keep the drainage system running smoothly and the receiving waters free of the pollution from such sites. So this is quite an important manhole. This is taking all of the roof drainage and drainage from the channel drains which comes this way after the filtration. This is the petrol filling station. The separator and water treatment system aims to remove particulates and that's quite key because particulates are the carriers of pollution. As well as the particulates, it's also removing dissolved metals, particularly dissolved zinc, dissolved copper. From the water treatment plant that is installed here, the water then discharges to the next set of treatment, which is a vegetative swale area. This is what's so exciting about suds. With traditional drainage systems, it was just about the drainage. You got the water off the site and that was it. With suds, it's about drainage, plus lots of other wonderful things. 
here, we can have uh, uh, wildlife habitats, um, we can have a, a, a beautiful bit of greenery. At the moment it doesn't look much, but in, in, in the near future we'll have uh, wildflowers growing here and various other planted shrubs. It'll provide a nice environment for the people in the house that are behind as opposed to just a car park. And it, it'll just be nice for us all in our, you know, as we go about our daily lives to see a bit of greenery, a bit of wildlife. Fantastic. Often swales are depicted as very steep sided ditches that wouldn't support their own wildlife. This is the opposite. This is great. You've got shallow sides. The thing is not geometric. It's not harsh. You've got these gentle slopes. You've got very nicely designed outfalls so that you've got no health and safety risks here. You've got tree planting, hedge planting. There's going to be marsh marigolds and sedges and rushes in the base of this area. This is just going to get nicer and nicer. There's a lot of really nice detailing here that may not be obvious, but um, outfalls and where water comes in. There's no large engineering structures with big concrete aprons. It's all very natural. Those bumps in the bottom there, they're going to help oxygenate the water as it comes in. And there's a whole series of these. This isn't the only, only one. They happen regularly all along the swale, which is another thing we should try. We should try for multi-points of water entering. And that, again, reduces the risk of scour or erosion at any particular point. So this is the sort of detail we want to see. There's a very nice head wall as well. So we're avoiding those sort of in-your-face engineering structures. These are going to do the job just as well. They're going to be safer, more attractive and help to blend into the eventual landscape. So for the first time we've managed to take an urban industrial site that has typically been built around traditional methods of drainage, taking water off the surface as fast as possible, putting it underground. This time we're managing water on or near the surface, treating it for quality Indeed, there are more than three treatment stages here and we're putting it finally into detention basins and swales and creating a natural environment where biodiversity will flourish. This is one of the great things. It means that no longer can a developer say to us, we can't do this because we can say, if ASDA can do it, then you can do it. And ASDA can do it, not only achieve it, but do it well. And that's what we want to see.